In this video, I'm going to be covering Cursor. I originally covered Cursor on this channel when I started the channel about a year and a half ago. This is when it was an open source project and the code editor was a lot simpler than it was now. It's definitely to the point now where it's really full featured. There's a ton of interesting things that the team is doing there. I'm just going to be doing a little bit of a demo on some of the different features that are built within Cursor. There is a free tier, so I encourage you to check this out. There's a two-week free trial, so you get 2,000 completions, so 50 slow premium requests, as well as 200 Cursor small uses. So the way that they break it up is for the premium flagship models like GPT-4.0, as well as Claw 3.5 Sonnet. Those are considered premium requests. And then for their cheaper models like GPT-4 O Mini or their own model, which is I think called Cursor Small, those are considered small models. So on the pro tier, it's going to be 20 bucks a month. You get unlimited completions as well as 50 fast premium completions per month, as well as unlimited slow premium requests. Here I have a really simple template of a Next.js app. We have a header, we have a footer, and we have a really simple screen. If I just pull up cursor here and make it a little bigger, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to expand this. And what I'll do in this video is I'll focus on maybe the mobile view. Hopefully you can see more of the editor and then just less of the actual interface that we're going to be working with here. The first thing right off the bat, you might think this looks like VS Code. And yes, it definitely does. So it's very seamless in terms of the migration from VS Code to Cursor. So you can even install your VS Code extensions within this and all of that. So it's a really natural transition if you are a VS Code user. All right, so the first thing that I want to show you is a new feature that they have within beta, which I think is probably the coolest feature that I think a ton of people are having fun playing around with. It's definitely not perfect yet, but it definitely shows you the potential of this tool and where things are going. So honestly, when I saw this, I was a little bit skeptical at first, but having used it a little bit, it really is pretty amazing. Well, I'll just show you here. I noticed on my nav bar on mobile, the title went away. I would say on mobile, the title in my nav bar disappeared for the page. Let's add a linear gradient. And for my footer, let's have the nav items stack into two columns. And then from there, I'm going to submit this. And then what this is going to do is it's going to take all of that context of what I'm sending in. It's going to be taking the page. It's going to know about the nav and the footer. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go through each of them and it's going to apply essentially a diff of the changes that it's making to our different files here. You can take a look at all of the different changes that it's suggested to apply to the particular files. It's really thought out in terms of the different key commands that you can use. I can just tab through this so I can see all of the different changes. And what you can do is if you want to accept it, I can command enter and that will apply that. I can command enter for the footer and I can command enter to the nav there. But now that they're accepted, I just refresh the page here. And look at that. So we have a nice two column footer here on mobile. We have that subtle linear gradient on the background here. We see our app name here. And then if I just make this bigger, so it looks like our normal footer. This is applied across mobile and desktop. And then I do see we have example app now as a button. Now I'm just going to exit out of this view. Now I'm going to go within the navigation here and I'll just close out this terminal view. So I'm just going to word wrap everything. I'm just going to delete this example app button that we have within the middle here. And then what we can do here, so I'm just going to highlight the whole file here and I'm going to say change the app name to developers digest and add a couple links on the right hand side. So you have the option here of the different models that are available to you. You can also plug in some API keys if you'd like. If you want to use OpenAI, you can plug that in. Or if you want to use Sonnet directly from the Anthropic API, you can plug those all directly within Cursor here. But here you have the option of using Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, or you can use a smaller model if you'd like. If you're within the space and you're familiar with the different capabilities of the different models, Say for smaller edits and you want to be a little bit more mindful of maybe saving some of the credits of your fast inference of the stronger models, 
You can just switch here. I'm going to submit that and what it will do from there. You'll see it quickly go through the code and then you can just accept the changes. I can just accept that. Now it says developers digest. We have a couple links here. It's not quite on the right side here. What I can do here is I can say, since those links aren't quite on the right hand side and say, if you're not familiar with tailwind, you can just go ahead and highlight that chunk of code where they are. And you can say the links are not on the right side. And then you can submit that. And then right there, you see a couple different changes. We can accept that. And now we see the credits in the center. And then we have the links on the right hand side. So just to give you an idea on some of the things that you can do. All right. So now we're on our homepage. It's a pretty simple homepage. We have a little bit of authentication here from clerk. It's going to show these different buttons, depending on whether you're signed in or signed out. And let's just go ahead and try and make a more impressive generation. In this case, we're not going to use GPT-4 O mini. Let's make a few different sections that incorporate the dashboard and learn more buttons within some copy about a company called Developers Digest. I want links to recent YouTube videos in cards, and I want cards of some recent GitHub projects on the page. Let's go ahead and submit that edit here. So in this case, we're going to be going through this whole file here. And what I'm going to do here is once it's done with the generation, I'm just going to go ahead and accept it. I'm going to save that out. And then there we go. So let's just make this full screen. Here, obviously, we don't have images since it's not going to be pulling those images. But you saw within just seconds, we have a landing page, right? It went from just being a dashboard and a learn more button to now something where if I just swapped in these images, this could be something that you could use for an actual project, right? This is just a really quick look on some of the things that you can do with cursor. There are a ton of little things that you can do. So I'm going to show you a couple more here. Let's say you forget how to install something like Shad CN UI. You can go ahead and click Command K and you can say install Shad CN UI. And then there you go. It can even write terminal commands for you. Now, if I go back to the page.tsx here and let's just break the code here and let's open up the errors panel. What you can do here is if you have an error, you can just go ahead and click fix with AI and it's just going to go ahead and fix your code. So you can just click accept and then there you go. This is really useful if you have a bunch of TypeScript errors across different files. You can just go through and iterate different files and really quickly come to solutions on what you need to do to resolve that particular type error. So another thing here is you also have a chat window here. Within the chat interface, what you can do is you can access files, folders, code, web, docs, Git, or a code base. I can say, what is the latest version of Next.js? What it's gonna be doing there is it's gonna be searching the web for the answer. Instead of actually leaving your editor to get an answer for something, you can just quickly go to the chat window, which you can open and close with command L and you can just add web. How do I use the router? And then there you go. It's going to go ahead and give you a really quick example on whatever question you might have. That is super useful. Now, the other thing that you can do here is just like you saw with in composer view, you can also select different folders here. So you can say, let's just include the three things that we have working with on the page. And I could say, make some suggestions on how this can be improved. This can be more technical. This can be really whatever you want. It doesn't necessarily need to be UI based. So say if this is a backend application, this will work just as well as you might expect. Here it's saying, let's consider a bit of responsive design. We have the existing code, add a grid. We also have a performance optimization. And then what you can do here is if there's something that you want to apply within your code, you can just click this apply button. It will show you the diff and then you can accept it with command Y or command enter. You can just go through here. Let's say I don't want that suggestion. And then there's things like even like accessibility. I can go ahead and apply this. I'm going to accept that. I'll save that out. Now, the thing with this is it's not always going to be perfect suggestions, but it's going to be improving over time. As these LLMs improve, a tool like cursor is the perfect tool that's poised to benefit from all of these LLMs continually getting better and better over time. 
Now, now the thing that I really like with cursor is it's a tool that really anyone can use. Beginners can use this as well as really seasoned developers. Now, if you're a more seasoned developer and you're thinking this isn't something that I'm going to be using or not something that I particularly need, I'd encourage you give it a shot. It might really surprise you because even just for the speed alone of making some of those smaller changes or even bigger changes, or even some of those more tedious changes, say if you just want a simple landing page, you want to spin it up, maybe you're a backend engineer and you're not used to styling things out and you don't work with Tailwind or React components all too much, you can do essentially what I just showed you in this video and quickly scaffold something out. And you can obviously iterate from there. So you can command K or you can leverage that chat interface. But overall, this is just a really quick look at cursor. I'd encourage you to check it out. It's a really impressive tool. I'm going to be using it at least for the next month here. I've used GitHub Copilot. I've used Supermaven. I'm going to make a video maybe in a month's time where I'll circle back and I'll revisit what I think about the project. But overall, that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.